Here we're gonna do two little number puzzles based under the guise of how bad 2020 was. So obviously this is not really proving that 2020 is any better or worse as a number than 2021 or 2019, but I think maybe the strategies that we use to solve these puzzles are pretty interesting from a mathematical standpoint. So we wanna answer two questions, and those questions are which is larger? The 2021st root of 2021 factorial or the 2020th root of 2020 factorial. And the second question is 2020 to the power of one over the square root of 2020 or 2021 to the power of one over the square root of 2019. So if you look at these, this is not super clear because a larger root produces a smaller number, but a larger number on the inside produces a larger number. So one thing is pushing this one larger and one thing is pushing this one smaller. So the fact that 2020 is on the inside is pushing it smaller, but the 2020th root is pushing it larger. And then you have the same kind of thing down here as well. Okay, well let's maybe look at this one first. And we'll do this just by taking a ratio of these two objects. So let's maybe put this one in the numerator and this one in the denominator. So we've got the 2021st root of 2021 factorial, and we're gonna go ahead and divide that by the 2020th root of 2020 factorial. Now, if we can show that this is larger than one, that means the numerator is larger, which means this one wins out, if this thing is smaller than one, then the denominator is larger, which means this one wins out. So let's see what we get. Well, a number is larger or smaller than one if and only if when you raise it to any exponent, it's larger or smaller than one. So we might as well get rid of the radicals here by raising this to an appropriate exponent and we'll in fact raise it to the 2020 times 2021. So now we're dealing with a ratio of whole numbers instead of a ratio of these radicals. That's gonna leave us with 2021 factorial to the power of 2020 in the numerator. So notice this 2021 is gonna cancel with this 2021 in the numerator. And then we've got its like friend in the denominator. So that's gonna look like 2020 factorial to the power of 2021. Now we'll start rewriting the numerator and the denominator of this object in a way that we can simplify it. So I'll take this 2021 factorial and split off a 2021, leaving me with 2021 times 2020 factorial, and then I must raise all of that to the power of 2020. So again, that's just a simple rewriting of the numerator. Then I'll do something fairly similar in the denominator, but I'll do it in a way so that we can cancel something in the numerator. So I'll factor out a 2020 factorial. That leaves me with 2020 factorial times 2020 factorial to the 2020. So next I can take this 2020 and move it onto both of these terms. Let's see what that leaves me with. 2021 to the 2020 times 2020 factorial to the 2020. So again, that's just distributing that exponent through across the multiplication. Now I can leave the denominator as is. So I've got 2020 factorial times 2020 factorial to the 2020. But now very clearly we can, fact, we can cancel those objects. Now we're gonna move into some inequalities. So I'm gonna take this 2020 factorial and notice that that number is most definitely smaller than 2020 to the power of 2020. So think about it, that's 2020 times 2019 times 2018 times 2017, so on and so forth. So if we take 2020 and replace that into all of the copies that are not equal to 2020, so in other words, we replace 2019 with 2020, 2018 with 2020, so on and so forth, we get something larger. 
But since we get something larger, that means we have something smaller overall because it is larger in the, in the denominator. So that gives us this inequality in this direction of 2021 to the 2020 over 2020 to the 2020. So let's maybe go ahead and write that out. That's because 2020 to the 2020, clearly bigger than 2020 factorial by that discussion that we just had. Essentially because 2020 is bigger than 2019 and it's bigger than 2018, so on and so forth. Now we can group these objects together, giving us 2021 over 2020, all to the power of 2020. But we've got a number which is larger than 1 to the power of 2020. So this is larger than 1 to the 2020, which is larger than 1. So we've ended up showing that this ratio is larger than 1, which means this number is bigger than this number. So we can say definitively that 2021 is better than 2020. Okay, let's get rid of this and then we'll see if 2021 and 2019 can work together to beat 2020. So we just got done showing that 2021 beats 2020 by itself. Now we want to show that 2021 and 2019 can team up together to beat two copies of 2020. We're going to do this with calculus. So we want to consider the following function. So I'll call it f of x and it will be given by x plus 1 to the power of 1 over the square root of x. And now we want to show that this function is decreasing. We can show this function is decreasing with a standard result from calculus one, and that is we will show that its derivative is negative. So I'll write that here. We wanna show that f prime of x is less than zero, and this will actually only clearly hold for some special values of x, and we'll see where this comes into it, but the values of x that are required are x values that are bigger than or equal to e squared minus one. So again, that's a little trick that'll end up showing up later. So we need to take the derivative of this guy. And since we've got variables in the base and the exponent, we probably wanna use this thing called logarithmic differentiation. So taking the log of both sides gives us the natural log of f of x equals one over the square root of x times the natural log of x plus one. Okay, so we use the standard logarithm rule to bring that exponent down. Next, we'll take the derivative of both sides of this equation. That leaves us with f prime of x over f of x on the left-hand side by the chain rule. Then on the right-hand side, we can use the product rule, leaving us with one over the square root of x times x plus one from taking the derivative of the natural log of x plus one. Then thinking about the square root of x in the denominator as x to the minus half, that gives us minus natural log of x plus 1 over 2 times x to the 3 halves. Okay, so like I said, that's just by the product rule over there on the right-hand side. Now we'd like to build these things up so they have the same denominator. What will be required is multiplying this term by x plus 1 over x plus 1 and then this term by 2x over 2x. That will give us a common denominator. So we'll do that simultaneously with multiplying both sides of the equation by f of x, so we've kind of gotten f prime by itself. So let's see what that leaves us with. We'll have f prime of x equals 2x minus x plus one times natural log of x plus one, and then in the denominator, I have 2x to the 3 halves times x plus 1, and then I need to multiply all of that by f of x. Next, I'll make a really important observation, and that is both of these things that I'm circling in green are always bigger than 0. But that tells me that the sine of f prime is equal to the sine of the numerator. So let's write that down. We've got sine f prime of x equals the sine of 2x minus x plus 1 natural log of x plus 1. But then we can take that 2x minus x plus 1 natural log of x plus 1 and divide it by x plus 1. That will not change the sine. And that means that all of this is equal to the sine of this new function, which I'll call g of x, 
which is equal to 2x over x plus 1 minus natural log of x plus 1. So if we can show that g of x is always negative, then we're good to go. That means that we have achieved this kind of intermediate goal here. So let's maybe put that as a claim. g of x is less than zero for x bigger than or equal to this e squared minus one object. And now you can maybe see why we're looking at this e squared minus one. So let's do a proof. So we'll do this by checking that g evaluated there is negative. So let's see that g evaluated at e squared minus one. So that's going to give me 2 times e squared minus 2 over e squared. So that's our first term. Then plugging this into the natural log will give me the natural log of e squared, which is just 2. So that means I can subtract 2 here. Now next up, notice that this 2 e squared over e squared, the e squareds cancel, which we can cancel out with this 2 here. So I'll scrub this one out with this one telling us that this is equal to two over e squared and it is negative, but that's clearly less than zero, which gets us started for showing that this g of x is less than zero. Next up, we'll show that it is a decreasing function, which means we need to show that its derivative is always negative. So let's do that. Let's take the derivative of g, and I'll let you guys do this. You can use standard derivative rules. It's a bit simpler than the derivative that we took up here, so I don't think it should be too bad. After doing a bit of calculation, we see that it's minus x over x plus one quantity squared, but that's clearly less than zero in the important values of x. So we have g evaluated here is negative, and then g is decreasing, which means g is always negative. But since g is always negative, f prime is always negative, but that means that f is decreasing. Okay, so let's take that information and finish it off. So we just got done showing that our function, x plus one to the power of one over the square root of x is decreasing for x bigger than e squared minus one. Now we wanna evaluate this for some values of x that are bigger than e squared minus one and use that to decide which one of these guys is larger. So notice the decreasingness of this function tells us that f evaluated at 2020 is less than f evaluated at 2019. Well, that's part of the definition of a decreasing function. Okay, let's see what f evaluated at 2020 is. That's gonna be equal to 2021 to the power of one over the square root of 2020. And then let's see what we get from this. This is gonna be equal to 2020 to the power of one over the square root of 2019. So now we have this object is less than this object, which is not quite what we want. We want something that involves 2021 and 2019 and two copies of 2020. But those inequalities are actually pretty clear. If we make the base smaller, the whole thing obviously becomes smaller, meaning that this thing is bigger than 2020 to the power of one over the square root of 2020. Then furthermore, here if we make the base larger, then the entire thing becomes larger. So this thing is less than 2021 to the power of one over the square root of 2019. So let's see what we have comparing this extreme left-hand side together with the inequalities that run through this setup. We see that we have determined that 2021 to the 2019 is larger, meaning that 2020 loses again. And that's a good place to stop.